<sighs> What's up, YouTubers? And welcome back to another episode of Watch Me Point Out All the Cops. Uh, I'm not even sure which tough to start with today since I'm like plan on filming like four different videos while I'm out on this ride today so I got a lot of shit to cover it's cause I had a little incident where uh, I thought I was recording my, my drift uh, the other night I recorded like an hour's worth of me rambling on and uh, absolutely zero of it got recorded <laughs> so I got some catch up to do um, I guess I'll start off with um, a, a very popular, I guess, topic. Um, I don't like to talk about shit that a lot of other people have talked about because I like being original. But um, a big topic, like if you're looking to buy a motorcycle, one of the big, uh, uh, excuse me, one of the big ifs is should I start on a 250? Uh, 600 or like I've heard of it happening but some people start straight on the leader bike um, so I'm gonna do kind of like my input on that what I feel you know like what I started on and you know we'll go from there but as you all hopefully know I ride a 600 RR a CBR short um, and this is my first bike. I started on the 600 series. I didn't start on a 250, um, but I was seriously contemplating it when I first bought the bike. Um, simply because, like, the purpose of a 250, right, other than if you want to get great gas mileage and, like, you... I would buy one because they'd be fun to play on, more or less. Like, they'd be really good, great on gas mileage, but along with that, I think I would rather buy a supermoto than a 250. So, I mean, you can get pretty much one or the other fairly dirt cheap, and I will be adding one uh, to the collection probably by the end of the year. So, most likely uh, a supermoto. I'll probably get a DRZ. That's what I'm looking at anyway. But, um, yeah, 250s, they're, uh, they're a really good starter bike. Uh, for sure, and then basically the purpose of them is to teach you the fundamentals while keeping you within uh, some acceptable limits because in a 600 uh, <laughs> At least when I started because I had you know a lot of people cross over from like motocross to street bikes, you know um, My case was not that I had very little um, experience with actually like no experience pretty much with uh, motorcycles but when I started riding but uh, a 600 RR if you do not respect it if you do not approach it um, you know the way it needs to be treated when you first uh, start riding it it will fuck you up reason I chose the 600 over the 250 was um, because more or less uh, financial issues and I know that is a big thing to take into account when you're looking to start riding um, because I personally would recommend you know when you first buy a bike you also need to be prepared to go out and buy all your gear um, do not please do not ride without a helmet like I don't I don't even know if it makes you look cool like, I'm just, I don't know, why, why would you risk your life? You know, I, I've lost people, I've lost workmates, friends, because just didn't want to wear a helmet, and I, I just don't get it. Um, but, but along with the startup costs, like, if you're going to go to 250, I knew within probably a month of building upon those fundamentals that I was going to want to upgrade, you know, to something bigger, something with a little, you know, a little more power to it. So that's why I went straight for the 600. You know, I was like, you know, I'm gonna learn on it. 
That way I know how to handle the car right off the bat. I don't have to, you know, learn on one motorcycle then ramp it up basically. I can just learn on the aggressive one to begin with. Um, that and I, I, I like, I don't know, that was just my decision. I'm all about, uh, you know, the uh, adrenaline rush and shit, so, so learning on something that will can eat you alive is, to me, is a, is a much more interesting concept, you know, a lot more fun, basically, than, than learning on something a little more tame, so, uh, I know one of my friends did the 250 deal, um, and whatever, you know, that was cool, but, but no, nah, I wanted to start around the 600 because I didn't want to go out, you know, a few months later and tr sell it and then try buy a 600, um, just wasn't my this wasn't my uh, my goal don't stall out there buddy Jesus Christ the plane looked like it was like it was just dropping <laughs> yeah that's not good um, so for me the 600 was a good choice because I knew I was going to eventually step it up regardless. Um, so it was just it was just me kind of beating, you know, beating it to the punch. I, I was just, what was the word I'm looking for? I, um, proactive, I guess. I was being proactive about it um, whenever I, I decided to go with the 600 first. So. It's, you know, it's completely up to the buyer, it's completely up to you, um, stay, the, the important thing is to stay within what you are pretty damn sure you can handle. Now, just what you think you can handle, because, you know, you, like, a lot of people can't even eat without getting too much food, you know, what do they say, that your eyes are bigger than your stomach, well, it kind of, and the same concept can kind of be applied to a motorcycle, and I, I think that's where you see people jumping straight to a leader bike, but that's also the same situation where I see a lot of people giving it up very early on, you know, ride for a month or two, and say, oh, there's no way I can do this, I've, I've got a family, I, I, I can't do this, I'm going to kill myself. Well, no shit, you hop straight on a, a like, the largest class of super sport bikes, like, the fastest thing on two wheels on the road. So, that's why it's important to stay within, like, your means. I wouldn't, I wouldn't probably not start on anything larger than a 600 series. Uh, in my opinion, you know, and after riding, that's just, it's just, like, I'm st I've, I've been riding for, for months now, and so like I said, I, I always talk about it, but I'm still learning. Um, and, you know, the, the bike is, uh, for damn sure, has enough power. Um, and I don't even see myself graduating out of 600 probably for for several years, um, most likely. I mean, it's it's got more than, I don't know. Yeah, you can get the leader bike because, like, they're cool and, you know, they go a lot faster and stuff. But um, I just, the 600 series is, like, a very good, like, it can be used even as, like, a very uh, comfortable commuter bike. Um, but, yeah, so in that case, um, I have already said multiple times, 600, more than enough power, um, it's, a, it's good to start on if, um, if you take it slow, um, you know, I would, I wouldn't just hop on it by yourself, have somebody there that's teaching you, take it to, with you to an MSF course, uh, those are like a great introduction to, uh, sport bikes and stuff, you, especially if you're going to start on like uh, like a 600, um, they will take their time with you and teach you the right way to to do things, um, which is what you want. You want to, you know, they, they give you the tools to, to grow upon your basic riding skills. Um, and uh, the one thing they, they really focus on that I think is most important uh, when learning how to ride a 600 is uh, your throttle control. Um, because 600, uh, I know when I first started riding uh, my CBR, um, it's like, it feels like you're, you've got nothing, like you've got that play uh, in your throttle, you got nothing, 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 and then all of a sudden you just hit it and you're just fucking, like you're just fucking gone. But, um, and it really is. So 
so it's kind of it's very touchy um, especially when you're trying to keep the speed low because a super sport doesn't like to go slow it likes to go fast if, but if you don't think you can handle that you really you know you're not too sure uh, I would for sure start with a, a 250 I, you know because I won't that's not like that it's got a very gradual uh, power curve um, that will allow you to learn your fundamentals on a bike and uh, your limits on a bike before you upgrade. Um, it's still it, it's still a you know financially a fairly easy thing to do. Uh, 250s usually run for um, like on Craigslist. Uh, they're like $2,500 for like uh, like an 08 even. They're pretty fucking cheap out here for us. But um, yeah, they're pretty cheap stuff. So. Uh, you can, you know, you can go out, get one, and then whenever you, uh, you finally want to upgrade, you can do that. I think that's a cop right there, too, behind me. So I'll just going to point out every single one. Um, but yeah, and also a 250, if you've got a problem with, uh, speed, a <laughs> 250 will, like, help you not have a problem with speed. Uh, you get on a 600 and you're learning and all you want to do is go faster so you're ripping down the highways at 120 miles an hour because like you were just balls to the wall want to fucking go crazy and this bike will let you easily do it. <laughs> so um, yeah along with that uh, I think I'm going to end that first topic and I'm going to move on to my next one which is like 